The Open Portal with Marquina Farron every Friday at 5 to 6.30 p.m. and every Sabbath afternoon at 6 to 6.30 p.m. Fresh anointing from above as the Church of Heaven is one with the Church on Earth. It's holy time. The portal's open and God is with us. You and I on The Open Portal with your host Marquina Farron, only Flashpoint Radio. Holy time, the day has ended. Seven. Fresh anointing from above. Happy, happy Sabbath. We've tasted the living waters. for this evening for the Lord has been good I'm also grateful for my sound I want to say happy Sabbath to my producer I'm sounding good I'm sounding real good this evening like every other evening but I I believe this evening is the best evening <laughs> happy Sabbath flash pointers seven day Adventists alike whether you are uh, a sabbath keeper in the seventh adventist church once you are a sabbath keeper the sabbath was not made for seventh adventist it was made for man just before you stone me you can check your bibles but i want to say happy sabbath to all of our friends all those who are a perennial flash pointer you've been listening to flashpoint you've been you've been tuned in from monday with the breakfast man on Sundays with Lady Elise and Lisa Pierce, of course, on a Thursday, Bruce, on Tuesday, I believe, it's Connie J.E. And of course, the man himself, the Grand Revival Study, Brother Elder Edgar Bennett. Happy Sabbath to you, sir, wherever you are. But I want to say a happy, happy Sabbath. To all our Seventh Adventist friends all across the Grand Cay from uh, North Side uh, to West Bay. So wherever you are, of course, my friends in in the Creek, in Cayman Brack, Cayman Brack, we want to say happy, happy, happy Sabbath 
to you indeed god has been faithful i don't know about you but i'm happy it is sabbath not only that it is sabbath but it is sabbath again which means that god has given us one more sabbath you know they told me once that god is like that you know whenever it comes to the sabbath god is like that orchestrator and he is one two and he's leading the choir one two three four five six and then he rest somebody missed it and so let me let me go again god is like that musical orchestrator when it comes to the sabbath and we are like uh the core members and he is leading one two three four five six and then he rest not because he was tired not because he never had anything else to do but because he had a special pronouncement on the sabbath he honored it he hollowed it he sanctified it and he make it holy i am pastor marquino the name is m-a-r-k-i-n-o not m-a-r q i n o but it's m a r k i n o and i'm happy to be in this space i'm i'm back in studio with of course my uh astute and uh, verbose producer uh michael williams uh, a very good guy um being around him i realize i'm being a little like him i'm very passionate with what i do and i want to say to you sir michael flashpoint we are happy to have you uh, a part of our ministry and what we do here of course the the one of our beautiful roses and i say one of um lady elise she's always with us you know she likes our company and we like your company too happy sabbath welcome to the space but i want to say happy happy sabbath of course how could i how could i forget our friends in the diaspora uh, what we do here in grand k is we could not have accomplished it without your works without your prayers and without your uh, support i am happy to be here with you to share with you i'm excited uh whenever uh sabbath is here because i'm always looking to have a powerful discussion with you i believe that this part of the ministry the lord has blessed me with the gift of talking and you know the ability to think and so i enjoy talking and so for for the next hour i, I want you to be obliged it's a choice you do have many other media platforms but we have a special guest for you this evening and we will be talking about the big one i am not qualified to talk about it that's why i invited somebody else who is more qualified than i am in fact i don't know anything about uh married i have not been married before i do plan to get married but um i have invited a one who is capable one who is not just a married man but he have gotten himself certified uh the loma loma linda university he is the last time he came on this platform he was a counselor but now he's coming uh, in a different capacity he's now a relationship coach uh, let me tell you something this world needs a little coaching when it comes on to relationship people don't get married um for commitment anymore people don't you know people don't stay in marriage um, until they do their do them part you know it's until i find fault it's until they find fault but we have a, a very capable man i would say the lord has blessed him with a beautiful wife um yes for the bible says that those who find a woman finds a good thing and permit me to say this evening i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna be very bold this evening women are plenty but wives are few so permit me to say that I'm, I'm feeling a little bold i feel like i have influence this evening so i'm going to use it i want to let you know that he is married for the past um four years he is he is a wonderful young man he's not he's not as young as people think he looks young but he's not that young um he's he's um his age is coming off the the calendar and um if you understand what that means i won't go deeper into it because i don't want to tell you his business that's his business he has one baby and i need to ask him um if he has any other plan <laughs> of getting another baby but that's not my business but he has been living in a beautiful um um island 
for two years. He is currently the school counselor at Cayman Academy. And, um, he is passionate. I ask him, Anil, what are you most, well, one of the things that you're most passionate about? He said to me, I am passionate about mental health. And uh, we had, uh, we've had many conversations. And, uh, you know, he said to me that we, people treat mental health, and I'm paraphrasing him. Um, people treat mental health as it's, as it's nothing, but it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So he's passionate about mental health and theology, theology rather, as it relates to it. One thing about my guest this evening is that he's very brilliant. A, a very passionate guy when it comes on to, 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 to subjects, to conventional subjects that people are unconventional um, subjects, as it were. Um, he's very passionate about it. Usually he makes sense, and that is why I invited him. And um, he wanted to be a pastor. Maybe that's why we are friends. And um, I think this guy is my pastor. He's, you know, when, when I need a word, when I need to hear from you know, good source. I, I, you know, I go to him. I also want to say happy Sabbath to to our guest and uh, his family, uh, brother, pastor, elder Anil. Uh, happy Sabbath, sir. Thank you, brother Martin. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath to you. Come on, man. You listen. I'm going to try that again. You know, you don't sound so excited <laughs> to be here. I want to let you know, you know that you are in the open portal. You know, and you're on Flashpoint Radio. Flashpoint, we're giving voice to the voiceless. And this is a family-oriented radio. And you are a family man. So let's try that one more time. Good evening, Brother Anil. Good evening, Brother Makino. How are you doing, sir? I am doing wonderful, my friend. That sounds like it. He's also a Trinidadian um, native, but he's now living and enjoying himself here with his beautiful family in the Grand Okay, just before we we you know go into the discussion, uh, we want you to go over to Flash, go on to our YouTube page and subscribe to Flashpoint Media. Flashpoint Media, please subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Let me tell you something: you do not want to miss this discussion. I had a a, a little you know when we ran uh, one of the one of the days this week, this guy told me some things about marriage that I am eternally grateful. And when I get married, I'm looking to, to borrow some of those concepts because I want to have a happy marriage. In fact, we wanted to name this program Happy How to Have a Successful Marriage. But we believe that that phrase was too cliche. Everywhere you go, people talking about happy marriage. And so we're talking about not just happy marriage. We're talking about the cheat sheet. So if you, you know, when I was a little boy, playing Grand Theft Auto. Michael doesn't know about that one. But when I was play, playing Grand Theft Auto, I would normally go on YouTube and, you know, I would look at the cheat codes, how to, you know, how to finish the game, how to, to buck the game, they would say. But we are not going to talk about how to cheat in your marriage. What we're essentially talking about, some things that must be done in order to have a successful marriage. I am not married. And so I, I think I am somewhat uh, disqualified to talk about it. Maybe a, a few years from now, I, I should be able. Because, you know, according to God's plan and his will, I should be doing that. Because it's an honorable thing. Two is always better than one. So we'll be talking about the big one on the open portal on this side of the brick. When we come back, Anil and myself will be chopping this one up. Married cheat sheet. Of course, I want to say happy Sabbath, of course, to our president, Pastor Dr. Ivor Harry and his family. I want to say, I want to say also happy Sabbath to not just Pastor Harry, but to the executive uh, committee. And the, the executive secretary, Pastor Carla Nayak, the, the, all these men are married people. I want to say good evening and happy Sabbath to all our friends who have decided to tune into Flashpoint Radio and by extension, Flashpoint Media. On this side of the break, our guest, Trinidad Dadian, a relationship coach, Anil Barath, will be chopping this one up, marriage, cheat, 
cheat sheet. I'm excited to hear what he has in store for us. You are invited to It's Time Evangelistic Campaign at the Georgetown Seventh-day Adventist Church on Smith Road beside the hospital. Evangelistic Campaign starts on July 8th and will continue through July 15th, nightly at 7 p.m. and 10 a.m. on Saturday. Come and hear the heartstring messages, including It's Time to Face the Truth. It's Time to Heal the Hurt and Pain. It's time to find the answer. It's time to make a choice. And it's time for a new life. The speaker will be Pastor Roche Riley from right here in Grand Cayman. Come and be blessed. Nightly features will include healthy nuggets, special music, gift and prizes, and nightly refreshments. So come out to the Georgetown Seventh-day Adventist Church on July 8th to 15th to the It's Time Evangelistic Campaign with the young dynamic pastor Roche Riley. faithful this one on the deck happy sabbath sabbath is about love and faithfulness every sabbath it's the earth's birthday they say that sabbath is a new cycle it's all about love rest and forgiveness if you're just joining us you're live with the open portal and of course yours truly pastor mark Is the first I heard this one. My producer like it. Sabbath is a happy time. Time for fellowship, family, and food. I will love you faithfully. Of course, you can always call in and give us your perspective. If talking is not your thing, you can send us a text message. The Lord has been faithful to his people. Tell a friend to tell a friend that you are live. Send a text message. Don't keep this program alone to yourself. Sabbath is about caring and they say sharing is caring. I'm happy it's Sabbath. For the Bible says, for those of us who are heavy laden and are burdened, you should come and you will get rest. Of course, the Greek word there for Sabbath, Sabbatismos, it's not just speaking to rest physically, but a spiritual rest in Jesus. Maybe you need to give TikTok a break. Maybe you need to give Instagram a break. Maybe you need to give Facebook a break. It's Sabbath. I remember when the Lord was feeding the children of Israel with manna. He gave them enough 
to take them into the Sabbath. I want to ask you the question, what have you brought? So many of us, we've, we go to church expecting a blessing because we ignore the blessings of the week. You know, I was doing some reading and on marriage, it says a happy marriage is a long conversation which always seems too short. Uh, one author says that happy is the man who finds a true friend and far happier is he who finds that true friend in his wife. I'm glad he said in his wife there. Another author says that sensual pleasures have the fleeting brilliance of a content. A happy marriage has the tranquility of a lovely sunset. Wow. Mark Twain says, to get the full value of joy, you must have someone to divide it with, of course. Another one says, Rita Rudder says, I love being married. It's so great to find that one special person you want to annoy for the rest of your life. <laughs> Julia Child says, the secret of a happy marriage is finding the right person. You know they're right if you love to be with them all the time but those are just some perspective i have the right person the man uh enough with my talking i have brought somebody who i know is capable not because of his qualification but he's also married to his beautiful wife brother my friend brother anil good evening again sir hi how are you doing now why did you decide to to accept to come and talk about marriage cheat sheet well, I suppose, you know, I have this, this passion for helping persons. And based on the conversation that we had after that run, and I do have to say my, my feet are still sore. My, my calves are still hurting, sir. Mercy. It's a good thing. The good thing about it, you have a wife can help, can rub it for you. <laughs> so it's, it's funny you mentioned that. So, so this evening, we're going to talk about marriage. We're going to talk about the differences between men and women, particularly a husband and a wife. We're going to talk about God's design for marriage. And the last thing we're going to talk about, I, I never like just speaking academically about something. I like to give people tools. You know, if I, if I tell you, Mark, you know, I need you to dig this hole, but I give you, I give you a spoon, it's going to take you forever. So I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> to equip people <laughs> with the correct tools well, to well, implement well. into their relationship. Can, can I quote you on that one? Go ahead. <laughs> because if I check Google, I'm certain it's not there. Which one? The one. If you because it, it's so powerful, you know. Let, let me. You know, I always say this to 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 Elise and Michael. Whenever I make some powerful statement, I said, Michael, if you check Google, you won't find it there. Because sometimes, <laughs> true. Because sometimes the Lord download some things in our spirit, you know, Anil, and only the oh, Lord Himself oh. can. Anybody can put anything on Google. But you said something powerful and profound, Marquino. If I'm giving you a, a, a spoon to dig a hole, I will take forever. So you heard it first here on Flashpoint uh, Radio. So yes, you decided to, to, to come and talk about this because um, you are passionate about um, the family. And um, I want to say, if I forget, sir, to tell you thank you at the end of your presentation, I'm saying it now. The floor is now yours, brother, oh. pastor. Anil Barath. <laughs> All right. So, so let, let, let's talk about marriage. So, as we know, marriage is a sacred institution designed mm -hmm. by God. And it, it holds tremendous potential for growth, joy, and fulfillment. It's, uh, it's quite telling that, you know, God instituted marriage for us to, to experience firsthand what his love and his intent for relationship is like. Mm. Um, of course, because we are, we are all fallen and sinful, uh, married life can sometimes be challenging. So in our conversation this evening, we're, we're going to explore the tools and principles that can mm -hmm. help couples cultivate a thriving and godly marriage. And it's important to note that while we will provide guidance this session, our session this evening, it's not a substitute for professional counseling or mental health support. Meaning, if you think or um, you and your 
spouse think that you need professional support, we do encourage you to seek that out. Uh, these are where we talk about broad principles this evening. Um, and this is not just for persons who are married. It's mm -hmm. also for persons who are contemplating marriage. So, Makino, if, I, <laughs> if, we, if we're out on the water, you know, we're out on South Sound, and we want to go east towards the bank, um, the most important step is the first step. Because if we start a little bit off, by the time we reach 10, 20 miles out, we're going to be very far from where we intended to go. Mercy. So for, for persons who are contemplating marriage, it's important to start on the right foot. Amen. So that you can continue down to the goal that you have. So this conversation um, categorically is not just for those who are already married, but for those who are planning to. I wonder if you're sending uh, any um, indirect messages to me. Oh, no, I, I, I never send in direct <laughs> messages, so I, I will tell you straight to your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let, let, let's talk about the differences in men and women. Talk to so us. So in order to build a successful marriage, it's crucial to understand and not just understand, but appreciate the inherent differences that God created between men and women. And these differences, they were not intended to, to create a division or a strife, but it was to complement and enhance a marital relationship. Mm -hmm. So recognizing and embracing these distinctions can pave a way for greater understanding, empathy, and harmony in a marriage. Mm -hmm. So in Genesis 2.18, it says... It is not good for man to be alone. Mercy. I will make him a helper suitable for him. So this, this verse, it underscores the purposeful creation of Eve as a helper for Adam, signifying the complementary roles of husband and wife. Right. So while both men and women, they are equal in weight and in value, but they have distinct strengths, perspectives, and needs. That is, the, that is the key point. They have different needs. So men, we are typically wired to find our purpose, our meaning and satisfaction mm -hmm. in the work or the task that we do or accomplish. So we often derive a sense of fulfillment from, from tangible or intangible achievements and accomplishments. So I'll give you an example. For a man to feel like a failure, he would have to be thinking thoughts like, I have not accomplished anything. I have not done anything. And if he has done a good job, then he feels like he has succeeded as a man. And this is not always work-related, but whatever project a man is working on. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, on the flip side, women often find a significant part of their self-worth and meaning in their relationships, wow. and particularly in their connection with their husbands, Marquino. Mm. So, let me recap. A man, his purpose, his satisfaction from life is from work that he does, Marquino. Mercy. But the woman, her satisfaction from life is from her connection with her husband. Wow. So, women place a great value on emotional intimacy, mm -hmm. nurturing and building strong bonds. So a woman's self-worth and her existence is tied not to what she does, but to her husband. Not what her husband does, but just her husband. Well, here's my first question, my friend. How do I mm. then as a man dichotomize uh, the difference? Uh, in fact, is there, is there a dichotomy between man's purpose in terms of what he does um, to bread for his family and intimacy to his wife is there a mm -hmm. difference mm -hmm. between be, be, between the same and how do i separate or do i attain uh, the same mm -hmm. or do i do or I, do I, I do my purpose while ensuring that my wife is taken care of romantically yeah. Yeah. and mentally i think what you're asking is how do we find balance mm -hmm. because Adam and Eve, you know, they had it pretty easy. It was just two of them and they could have done the work together. You know, they named the animals and they, they took care of the garden and, and 
ensure that everything was in order. But in our modern society, you know, you go off to work and your, your wife goes, either she stays home or she works somewhere else. So you guys, you don't spend as much time together. So wow. in finding harmony for this, it's, it's important to remember this Bible verse that says a man and a woman should cleave together. They should leave their mother and father and they shall cleave and become one flesh. It's important that you become one unit. Um, I had a conversation with my father earlier today and he was recapping some of the things that he did in his marriage. Um, like growing up within the household, I could see for myself. And the summary of it is this. When you get married, you become one. Hmm. There is no longer me and you. There is no longer my money and your money. There is no longer my things and your things. It's ours. It becomes the families. And so it's important at the onset of any relationship um, heading into marriage that you guys discuss these things and delegate responsibilities and roles wow. um, so that you have this cleaving together, this oneness, this, this family unit that goes forward. Wow. So wonderful, Anil. Wow. So are there any negative implications uh, if either parties do not get the chance to do what you're explaining? What am I asking? If a man is prevented or his, if he's not getting to do what he does based on what you just said, would that affect the overall chemistry of the uh, married or similarly if the woman doesn't feel connected mentally um, to her yeah. husband are there any negative implications that can affect the relationship or the marital um, diet yeah so that is definitely a thing that happens um, and it, it is a symptom of a rather deeper problem mm -hmm. well wow. so let me let, let me expand a little bit um, we've established that marriage is from God mm -hmm. and God created men and women to be together in a marital relationship and they have equal value, right. but different purposes. So let me, let, let me look at the big picture. If a marriage starts to fall apart, it is almost, and this, this is a, a general rule and not the exception. There is an exception to every rule. Right. But this is the general rule. If a marriage is falling apart, it is almost at least, at the minimum, 51% the man's fault. <laughs> and so, so the obvious question is why? Why is it 51% the man's fault? Tell us. Because a, a woman's selfhood and value is tied up with you, the man. If a marriage is falling apart, it is largely because the man did not create a spiritual, healthy, wholesome, familial environment in that home. If you proactively do that, Makino, your wife will respond to that. Mercy. She is taking her cues from you on how you conduct yourself. Mm. God has made you the leader and she is the follower. Mercy. So you have to set the tone. So she follows whatever tone or leadership you are setting. So that's why I say it's 51% the man's fault. And this is, this is the general rule. This is not the exception. There are exceptions. You know, throughout the Bible, we have examples like Hosea and all these other stories of errant women. But the mm -hmm. general rule is that the man is the leader and that is your God-ordained position. And you have a responsibility to create the kind of environment wow. That fosters that. Wow. Wow. So essentially, you know, and, and I want all listeners to take out your book and your, your pen because, you know, you know, Anil is under the spirit this evening. So what I'm hearing from you where we, where we don't see it commonly in the Bible is that submission goes two ways. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is true. Mm. The man has to submit himself to be the kind of godly spiritual leader that God wants him to be. He is responsible, not just for his wife, but the children as well. Wow. There is a family unit and the man is the leader. He is called. He has a 
spiritual responsibility to lead them to Christ. Wow. 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 Yeah. So you, you, you spoke about the, 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 the 51 percentage. You need to give us the <laughs> on, on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so so of, of course there are there are relationships where um and this this is a generalization as well, where by way of conduct or by way of the way in which the marital relationship was formed and the relationship dynamic in which I would dare say that women have had to take up the man's role because the man did not take it up. Wow. Mm. And that is a feeling of demand. So you can think of examples within our Caribbean culture in which you have strong spiritual women Mm -hmm. Um, you know, typical within the Caribbean, we have absentee fathers, single households, and women have to take up that responsibility. Um, so the, the broad rule is 51% demands yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Wow. There are cases and outliers. So I'll give you an example. If, if, you know, if a church goes into apostasy, Mark, you know, if out of the 100 members in that church, 70% of them follow the pastor, does God hold them responsible for the error in, in whatever they choose to believe? <laughs> the answer is yes. Of course. But who does he hold more responsible? It's the pastor. The pastor. Because he is the leader of the church. Right. So if we can objectively say within a church community, um, how much more true is that in a marriage in where the man is the leader? The leader of any organization is doubly responsible for the success or the failure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Listen, this, these are some, 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 some powerful stuff, you know, on, on the open portal. Um, it's not too late to, to tell a friend, share this link. You might know of a, of a couple or a relationship um, that might need a, you know, a little, you know, of course, this is not a counseling session. Um, it's it's uh, not a therapy session. It's more of an empowerment session for the, for the idea of counseling. The idea of therapy is for empowerment. And um, just to, you know, emphasize, if you, if you just join us, um, relationship coach and a married man, Anil Barath, is explaining the difference uh, between a man and a woman uh, in context of uh, marriage. So he's talking about the individuality. And of course, he will, of course, speak about the interdependency when both uh, comes mm -hmm. to together. And so, Anil, you, you, know, you spoke about the difference with men and, 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 and women. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you, you really touch on on the characteristic of, of a man are there any you know primarily about or, or women about women yeah. so let's let's look at that let's look at god's design or his his intent for marriage mm -hmm. so we've established it, it's a sacred institution and it's essential to us for our understanding of god's design and purpose of marriage to dive deep into the biblical foundation and we're going to look at the roles and responsibilities outlined in scriptures for husbands and wives um, and i will preface this by saying typically um, some of these verses have been used as what we call clobber texts mm -hmm. meaning um, some people use these verses to to hold it over a woman's head and beat them on it into submission and you will you will see what i'm saying shortly Mm -hmm. But the juxtaposition is that in the Bible, there are also texts that hold men accountable for what they're supposed to do. So broadly, marriage is about companionship and partnership. So mm -hmm. in the book of Genesis, we see that God created Eve as a suitable companion for Adam. Mm -hmm. And he recognized that it was not good for man to be alone. Right. He designed marriage as a union of these two individuals. So marriage provides us with this opportunity for deep companionship and emotional support wow. and partnership in fulfilling God's purposes for us. So let's look at the husband's role and responsibilities. Scripture teaches that husbands have a unique leadership role in marriage. So 
the text for this is Ephesians 5 from verse 25 to 29. And it instructs husbands. Now listen carefully. It instructs husbands to love their wives sacrificially, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So husbands are called to lead their family with love, humility, and selflessness. Mm. Now this involves providing spiritual guidance, emotional support, and physical provision for their wives and children. Husbands are to be the examples of Christ-like servant leadership within the home. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's look at the wives' roles and responsibilities. The Bible outlines the roles of wives within the marital relationship. And it's also found in Ephesians from, verse, from chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. It encourages wives to submit to their husbands as to the Lord. Now, a quick word on submission here. It is not about inferiority or being oppressed, but rather willingly respecting and honoring the leadership of their husbands. So, husbands are called to love their wives, mm -hmm. but the wife is called to, to respect her husband. So, it's not to say that men don't need love, but what God is telling his church here is that husbands, first and foremost, they want respect from their wives. And vice versa, what wives want, first and foremost, is love from their husbands. Right. Now remember, women are tied towards the relationship with the husband. So they want love. And men, they, de they derive meaning and purpose from what they do. So they want respect. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes them feel like a successful man. Mercy. So, wives are called to be the helpers and supporters to their husbands. And they work in creating a nurturing and loving environment for the family as a, as a unit. They have a vital role in nurturing the children and building a home filled with love, grace, and spiritual growth. Mm. So it's important to note that, you know, these roles and responsibilities within marriage are not meant to be oppressive or unequal in any way. Both the husbands and the wives are equal in value and significance before God. And the text for that is Galatians 3.28. Mm -hmm. They are partners who complement and support one another in fulfilling their respective roles. So... Of course, marriage is a beautiful dance of mutual submission, love, and respect. Wow. Uh, you know, just to, just to you know, piggyback on a, on, a, on, a, on a few things that you've said, that God found um, a suitable partner for Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people mm -hmm. just mix, miss the text because, you know, before Eve came in the picture, all you had there were beast and, and, and other creatures so adam you know I, and i listened to a preacher he said that adam spent long enough in the garden with himself realizing that the beast wasn't the, the, the suitable yeah. partner for him and so yeah. he, he the, the point that, that I, I i get from gathered from that is that before you can have a partner you must first spend some time with yourself because if you rush the process, you might end up with a beast. <laughs> there, there, there might be some truth to that. <laughs> some truth to that. So I'm, I'm not saying that uh, you know, any particular woman is a beast. No, we, 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 we will never say beast, that. A beast for that man, meaning she is not suitable for him. Right, right. They are, they are not, not equally yoked, perhaps in many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> most, most definitely we, we will have a, a song Anil, while we while we'll allow our listeners to, to ponder some of the the powerful words and wisdom that is coming from 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 you at this side of the break when we come back we'll talk about of course men the difference between men and women pre-sin uh, versus post-sin that's the big one on this side of the open portal Of course, this one is from my very good friend, Yannick P.G. Martin. I met him in university. He's now a pastor in France. There is a faith in God. There is a faith in God. 
the test of time and it wipes away your tears. Pastor Yannick Martin. There is a hope, there is a faith in God that does exceedingly abundantly more. There is a hope. And I cannot describe The joy that's pent inside my heart To know the Savior, He's my friend That He'll be with me till the end There is a hope You heard it first There is a faith in God You heard it first on Flashpoint Radio if there's a hope, there's a faith in God. There is a hope. Yeah. There is a faith in God that does exceedingly abundantly more. At least if you know this one, you can sing with us. Even in my darkest times. He shed his light to guide my path from sin And by his grace For those who are experiencing brokenness in your marital dyad For those who feel like divorce is the option For those who feel like there is no hope in your marital dyad For those who feel like it's over We want to remind you this evening, this afternoon if there is a hope. There is a faith. There is a faith in God. That does exceedingly yeah. Of course, that beautiful song and was written and composed rich, by one, my friend, Pastor sure. Yannick P. G. Martin. Jesus at the door. There is a hope. There is a hope. Be patient and wait. There is a hope. There is a faith in God. Brother, my sister, just a faith. There is a hope. Uh huh. And it's never too late to put your faith in God. Of course. To have faith in God. To have faith in God. Brothers and sisters, of course, if you're joining us for the first time, I want to say welcome, welcome to this. Uh, cyberspace it's a joy to have you and uh, we're having a very interesting conversation with of course counselor and relationship co uh, coach uh, Anil Barath and of course we're talking about the cheat sheet of you know of marriage if you want to have a successful uh, you know marriage you have to ensure that your 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 FM dial is locked and flashpoint radio and so Anil before you before the break, you know, you elaborated on the difference with men and women. You also, uh, in context of marriage, and of course, we will be looking at uh, the difference uh, with men and women, pre-sin and post-sin. Over to you. Yes, Marquina. So, we see that God created men and women very differently. The man, his purpose is to into the garden to work and the woman her purpose is to be a helpmate mm -hmm. now post sin in genesis 3 from verse 17 it says because you listened to your wife and ate of the fruit of, of the tree about which i commanded you you must not eat mm -hmm. cursed is the ground before you through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants from the field by Mercy. the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground from where you were taken from dust you are and from dust you return and to the woman he said i will make your pains in childbearing very severe i will meet with painful labor you will give birth to children and your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you mercy the priest said you, you got to spend some time there now. I want you to spend some time at, you know, you know, your sweat. Are you saying that if I'm not a working man, 
as according to the narrative here, I should not have a wife. I'm disqualified of having, you know, a wife. Men. <laughs> I would say that work in and of itself in our modern times is difficult to put a succinct definition on. Right. Meaning there are many different types of occupations mm -hmm. um, and many different ways in which to let's let's put it this way man is called to provide for his family mm -hmm. so there are many ways in which a man may provide for his family right um and that does not necessarily have to mean working a conventional job but i would also say that if you're not working, if you do not know your purpose, if you do not have a direction in which you are going, um, mm -hmm. then you should not be taking on a life. Mercy. So it's important to know direction you're headed back, you know, because somebody, a woman, somebody's daughter is going to attach themselves to you. And if you don't know where you're going, either you're going to follow her or if she doesn't know where you're going, both of you are going to go around in circles and it's a recipe for disaster. Mercy. So it's important for you to, there's this saying, the two most important days in a man's life, man and a woman, the hmm. day they're born and the day they find out why. Meaning the day they find out their God-ordained purpose. What am I placed here on this earth to do? What is my talent? What is my gift? And how can I use this to win souls to Jesus? Hmm. It doesn't have to mean being an, uh, being an evangelist. The Christian shoemaker, he does not spread the gospel by, you know, stitching little crosses or typing, um, stitching Jesus loves you in every shoes, but by making good shoes, by mm. doing good work, he is spreading the gospel. And you, somebody's internet is glitching. You may have to repeat that. Mm. The Christian shoemaker does not spread the gospel by stitching crosses and messages about Jesus in the shoes. He does so by doing good work. Wow. 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 So, so let's Yeah, go ahead. Let's look at five let's look at five tools in which we can give persons who are contemplating marriage. Yeah, just before you just before you go there, just before you go there, Anil, I I I also want you to elaborate um, what the scripture meant when it says that the woman is subjected to her husband. I, I don't know if you want to touch that. I think, yes, yes, yes. Let's, let's retouch on that. So, the rules pre-sin, the mm -hmm. man was to work and the woman was to help. And post-sin, there is still work, but there is, you know, sweat, toil, pain, and bitterness involved in it. You'll mm -hmm. have to toil hard. So, the job description remains the same. And for the woman, it is still to bring forth children, but now there is pain associated with it. Wow. And there is this additional um, stipulation that her desire will be to her husband. What does that so mean? So God is saying to Eve, God is saying to Eve, she will derive her purpose and meaning for existence from what Adam does. Wow. Which is a recap of what I, what I was saying earlier, that a woman's value in life is tied towards their husband and their relationship with their husband and the man towards the work that he does wow 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 so for our women who are listening you heard it from the relationship um coach that your desire and of course he's quoting the bible so don't have a problem with what he's saying here take it up with god and the bible thank you so much so you said earlier that you will not just give me an academic uh Response, but you also give us the tools. I'm taking out my, yes. my, my pen and my paper because I need to know what are these tools. Go ahead, my friend. Yes, so so let's, let's look at five, five practical tools that we can incorporate. And this, uh, this will be an expansion of what we spoke about on that, that morning that we ran. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give our listeners five C's. Five C's that if you practice them, I would dare say that you cannot have a bad marriage. If you earnestly put these things into your practice, any bad marriage will become a good marriage in time. Mercy. That's 
that's the guarantee that I can give. Amen. That if you earnestly do it, the key word is earnestly. Earnest. And, and so if you're just joining us, um, you, you come late, but you still will get some of the blessing. This is the cheat sheet. If you want to have a successful marriage, if you have a, a bad marriage, uh, uh, we, 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 won't, we are not saying, Anil didn't say definitively that you'll have a perfect marriage, but he said that you will have a good experience. Here they are. Five C's. Not the Pacific and the Atlantic, but five C's. <laughs> all right so let's look at the first one and you will you will see why this has to be the first one it is conversion mercy so 99 percent of our marriage's success is the conversion of those participants mm. so i'll tell you why you you cannot take two converted people put them into a marriage and have them get divorced because a converted person is totally surrendered to the will of god and to the Bible. Hmm. And God says that he hates divorce. Now, of course, he gave stipulations in which you may get divorced. It's not have to get divorced. It's may. Hmm. But generally, God hates divorce. So it's important to understand, pray and study by yourself and pray and study with your wife every day. Hmm. If you are converted, you cannot get a divorce. The Bible says that any man being Christ, he is a new person. So conversion is the first and most important thing. Wow. Now, it's, it's, it's very easy to be a Christian to the outside world. You know, you come to church, you wear the right clothes, Mark, you know, you show up on time, uh, you keep your mouth shut. People hmm. will say he's a good Christian. It's very difficult to be a converted Christian at home because that's where your true self comes out. Wow. So it's, it's important that you seek God's guidance. You continue to study your Bible and pray with God every day because our, our default position, our sinful nature um, directs us to the path of selfishness. And Christ is selfless. Love is selfless. Wow. For the benefit of our listener, I want to ask this question. And I'm asking, of course, for a friend. Are we then saying that only unconverted people get the divorce? I am not saying that. I am saying that if you have two truly converted people, it is very difficult for them to get divorced. Most, I agree with you. And, you know, that is why I ask, yeah. the, you know, because sometimes when we say stuff, um, especially, you know, strong stuff like these, we don't want any one of our listener to walk away with the idea that we're saying... Mm -hmm you know that mm -hmm. only unconverted people get divorced but what what anil what brother anil is saying that when two people are a committed christian there will be reasons for them to be divorced but because there is a converted god in them both they will find it easier to work things out as opposed to separate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wonderful all right yeah. my brother and of course this this goes 51 percent to the man because he is the leader again so, so he needs to be leading the household. <laughs> so you're saying, so you're saying, if the woman is unconverted but the man is converted, the ma the marriage stand a, stand a better chance of surviving if both are not. Statistically speaking, yes. Wow. Wow. Yes. All right. So let's let's look at the next next scene. The second one is commitment. Mm. So I'll ask you this question, Makino. And uh, not you as in, you know, within your relationship, but you as, as John Public. When you are about to get married, is divorce an option for you, Mark, you know? Well, I am not thinking of getting divorced. I, I don't want to get right. divorced. So there are people who going into a marriage, divorce is an option. If divorce is an option, you will get a divorce. I'll give you an example. You know, running is very popular here in the Cayman Islands. There's 5Ks, marathons. Yeah. When you run a marathon, the race is run in your head. Mm -hmm. If you have an option, Mark, you know, if you say, I am going to run this 5K and, you know, if maybe at the two kilometer or the three kilometer mark, I'm not feeling too good, I'll stop. When things get hard, you will take that out. Wow. wow. If not finishing that race is an option for you, Mark, you know, if you say, I'll see how this goes, 
as long as things go well, I'll continue with it. As wow. soon as things get hard, you're going to take that out. Wow. So if going into a marriage, divorce is an option for you, the devil is going to bring some circumstance in life. It could be 10, 15, 20 years down the road where you said, all right, I'm ready to take that out. I have this, I have this little card, this get out of jail card, and I am ready to take this divorce. If it is not an option going in, then it's never going to come up. Would, would that same principle be applied for those who sign prenups and all of that? Well, a prenuptial, or now we're getting into the legal realm, a prenuptial arrangement is, is you know, something for persons who try to protect generally assets um, mm-hmm. that may, they may have acquired before the marital relationship. And you remember earlier when I said that when you get into a marriage, the two cleave together. Yeah. And the, de- the definition of that in the Hebrew is they're sticking together, mm-hmm. meaning that for them to be separated, it would cause irreparable damage to, to both parties. Wow. Um, so the best advice is that there is no longer mine and yours. There is just the families. Wow. That is the best advice. Wow. However, there are persons who are generally wealthy, Mm-hmm. And they may have to do certain things to protect assets that were handed down generationally, um, that were not acquired during the marriage. And to those persons, I will say that they would need to um, work that out with fear and trembling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, wow. So what we're <laughs> essentially getting from the second C, that if you already start with divorce as an option chances are you will get a divorce yes yeah yeah definitely oh so so, so one of the second c somebody's asking what is the second c is it commitment the commitment so the first right. was it's conversion conversion so to be converted to christ yes and the second is, is committed to each other. Committed yes. to each other. Give us the third one. The third one is compassion. So, to the married listeners, I would ask, do you like having sex? Now, there is no shame in sex. God created it. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a good sex life, you need to concentrate on the compassion and the passion will take care of itself. Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a difference between compassion and passion? Uh, well, one, one leads to the other, I would say. So you need to worry about the tenderness, the sweetness, and the kindness of uh, your tone, your mood, your affect. And the passion will come as a result of what you have done before. So, so no marriage, I will, I will say this, Mike, you know, no marriage has ever been built on a good sex life. Wow. Wow. But let me let me let me include this. But every good marriage will eventually produce a good sexual intimate experience. Wow. So if, if you put the cart before the horse, you will end up in problems. Mercy. I think somebody's internet is glitching and I, I, I would like you to, to repeat <laughs> that so we, we can we can get it. Because we're all taking notes here you now. <laughs> I'll repeat it. No marriage was ever built on a good sex life. But every good marriage will eventually produce a good sexual intimate experience. So if you think that your marriage will be happy just based on a good sex life, then what you are doing is putting the cat before the horse. Wow. Your job as the leader, as a man, is to worry about the compassion and not just what you say, but how you say it. Mm. And eventually, the passion will come. Wow, I think I think what you're saying, Anil, is is very um, self-explanatory, and um, I think I I I don't know if I can agree with you yet because I'm not married, but I am, I think you're making sense, and I do trust the spirit of God in you. So there's no <laughs> ma- there's no good marriage that is built on good sex, but every good marriage is will lead to sex. That's very will we'll, we'll lead to a good sex life. We'll Not just sex, but good sex life. A yes. good a good yes. sex life. Thank you, my friend, for counseling me. And uh, for those who are listening, you are 
of course, in the open portal, of course, with Pastor Mark and my guests again for the second time in the year. And that's history. And I think Michael needs to make a documentation of that. You are the first person to, to, to have done two shows or two programs in one year on the, it's not just the open portal, but I believe it's the uh, flashpoint. Well, it's in the open portal. And I think that's history. So there is no marriage. Help me, Anil. No marriage mm -hmm. ever built solely as a foundation as a good sex life. Wow. Meaning, they don't put the cart before the horse. The marriage will not be as fulfilling mm -hmm. if the foundation is, ju is just on a good sex life. But every good marriage mm -hmm. will produce a good sexual intimate experience. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. So it is, it's important. The key to this is not to worry about the passion, but to worry about your compassion. Not what you say, but how you say it, Mark, you know. You know, I, 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 whoa, that's wonderful. You know, I heard somebody said, and I can't say the, the, the rest of it, but I'll say a part of it. You know, what, what, one, one great man says that there's a difference between passion and compassion. He says that compassion draws tears. I have to tell you off air what passion does. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be looking forward to hearing the rest of that quote. So. All right, man. Give us the fourth the four, the four C. <laughs> All right. So the fourth one is compromise. Mercy. So you never compromise in principle. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Mm. Thus say the Lord, you know. But you can compromise in preference, Marquino. So if you want the red car and your wife wants the pink one, you can compromise and meet in the middle on preference and get the black car. So not every hill is a hill to die on. It's important for us as men to let go of any stubbornness that we have and see how best we can reach an agreeable conclusion whenever there's conflict. Wow. So compromise on preference, never on principle. Hmm. Wow. And I, I, I noticed you said men. Does this apply for women too? Well, <laughs> remember our, our, our preference, our, our preface going into this is that the man is the leader. So of course, there, there are women who um, are strong-willed. Um, but if a man is creating the kind of environment in which a woman feels safe, secure, yeah. she, she feels loved, she feels cared for, she, she sees that this man is converted, he is leading the family before Christ every day, bringing up family worship, um, ensuring the family altar is properly cared for, mm -hmm. she will find it easy to submit to him. So, so... So you're saying so you're saying essentially as a man, married man in my house, I have the last say. In some essence, yes, if you are doing the things that you are supposed to do. Let me say that. If you're not doing it, Marquino, then <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I I I'll call this presentation the fifty one percent, can I? You you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So so what I, what I get from what you're saying, because this presentation, you know, I, I, I don't want you to just come here and behave that because I am the host, I must understand everything. So what I'm getting from what you're saying, and I'm just translating for some of our listeners whose internet are giving problem, because Flashpoint is an internet radio, and we have it for the reason that we have it. So you're saying that we never compromise, we never um, compromise on eating pork, because we don't eat pork. Yes. But yes. we, we can we can compromise on apples and oranges. Yeah, we can compromise on whether or not the chicken is barbecued or jipped. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, for, for, for the for the vegetarians, let me rephrase: whether the whether the vegetables are steamed or or, or baked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to talk about my vegetarians, you know. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's let's look at the last one. Yeah. The last one is communication. Mercy. So for the men here um, who are married, they may be able to relate very closely to this experience that I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. 
um, there may be times where your wife is saying something that to you sounds absolutely crazy and you are wondering if she is really saying that. In times like these, here's, here's a quick tip for communication. Mm -hmm. You need to say, what I heard you say is X, Y, Z. Is that what you are saying? And most times, she will say, no, I did not say X, Y, Z. I am saying A, B, C. Mercy. You will find that if you incorporate this, if you take what you are hearing and reiterate it to the person you're communicating with, to your wife, you will find that you might be a terrible listener. And perhaps it might just be your communication style. So it's important to take time and talk. And not just to take time to talk, but to listen and to understand what your wife or husband is saying. Mm. So typically men, whenever we listen to something, we are geared in such a way to find a solution to it. Mm -hmm. It's important to try and not solve the problem. Most times women just want someone to listen. There's this, there, there's this very funny YouTube video um, called it, It's Not About the Nail. Um, and the gist of it, um, those of you online could go and search it up after. The gist of it is that um, there's this relationship, a man and a woman, and the woman is complaining about a headache. Um, and in the, in the video, she has a nail in her head. Um, and the man, all throughout the video, is trying to tell her that you could solve your headache by taking out the nail, but the woman does not want a solution to the problem. She wants the man to listen to her. <laughs> so it's, it's important for us as men to understand this difference in the way that we think. Mm. We need to understand that our wives want someone to listen to. If she wants a solution to the problem, she will ask. Um, and at times for men, it can become quite frustrating. Wow. Well, so, so you, you, you're opening a, a can of veggie beans because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing, and I hope I'm hearing correctly, uh, what I hear is women sometimes are not asking for solutions. They want, to, yes. they want to be heard. They want to be heard. Here is the, yes, here is the question. Here is the question. Here is the question. If I'm walking on the road with my, with my wife and I'm saying, honey, if, you're, if you walk that part of the road, you're going to get hit. Should I, wait, <laughs> should I wait to listen to her or should I save her? Because quite frankly, I believe that I, I, I do not need permission to save my wife. You are correct in that assumption, sir, because again, you are the leader and you have to keep the household safe. Now, if you all are at home and she's just telling you about her day mm -hmm. and you can identify the problems that she's having, perhaps she's saying, you know, I'm, I had a headache all day, um, but Mikey, you, know, you notice that she's never drinking any water. Um, mm -hmm. She doesn't want you to tell her drink more water or to bring a glass of water to solve the problem. She just wants to be heard. Mercy. There are times, as, as the illustration you have presented, where um, you have a responsibility to take action to avoid danger. You have a duty to do that. But there are other times where all she wants is just, just a listening ear. Whoa, whoa. You know, I have two things to say, then I, you know, give you back the microphone. Um, because, you know, I know you're also a, a counselor. Are there any um, um, empirical data to, to support why women behave in this manner as opposed to, to men? What am I asking? What am I asking? Because what I'm hearing is that women, you know, when it is that they may be going through a hard time, they want to be heard as opposed to know what to do in not having the hard time. Are there any, yeah. you, know, you know, any psychological um, 
information to support this sort Studies. of behavior because i'm, I'm yeah, thinking i'm yeah. thinking that if there's a problem you solve the problem you fix the problem yes yeah and that, that that is how we think that is how men process <laughs> things so um without getting too in-depth into that because that is outside the scope of what we're talking about this evening right um, forgive my mind forgive a, my mind yeah the, yes, no, because because again, we want to solve the problem, Akino. Like, you know, so it is natural for you to to think, okay, let's find the data. Um, there is a. <laughs> I I am a man. Tool. There is there is a tool and a and a reference that I use. <laughs> it's a resource that I give to persons that I do marriage counseling with. Yeah. Um, it's founded on on a study done by Shanti Fieldhan. And the gist of it is that she conducted this broad population study um, to look at the key differences between men and women. Mm -hmm. um, and you will have to read it yourself to, to get the gist of it. But there, there is data to support it. Mm -hmm. um, succinctly, it is that men think differently and process differently and women think and process things differently. Um, and of course, persons can go and search that for themselves. It's called for men only and for women only. Um, it is one of the better resources out there, and it's also it's also something that is mandatory for any premarital counseling that I do for both parties. Wow, wow! The five C's for your cheat sheet: compromise. Compassion, conversion. Let, Anil, don't help me. Let me see if I was listening. So, so uh, let's, uh, let, let, let's go for, from the from the top. The most important one is conversion. Conversion, uh, commitment, commitment. And then we have compassion. Then you have compromise compassion. and communication. And communication. So you cannot have commitment if you're not converted. You cannot True. be you cannot be compassionate if you're not committed and you cannot uh what's the next one? Help me out. I'll tell you if you help me out. Compromise and then communication. When you are committed, because you're committed, you will comp com because you're compassionate, you will compromise. And because you are compromising, you will communicate effectively. You I notice I notice you never yes. use yes. I notice for all of the fours, C's, for most of, the, well, for, for four of the C's, you definitively spoke of the 51, and you, 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 you charge men. But for the last one, you said both. Because obviously, you cannot communicate with yourself. Yes, that is correct. So the 51. Communication is a two way street. <laughs> I, I, I was listening emphatically, not only for what you were saying, <laughs> for what you didn't say. So, so. You know, the fifty-one percent you'd say would not apply to communication. I would say that hmm, because communication is a two-way street, um, the man has the responsibility to seek to understand his wife mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Wow. Um, and I think women generally, they do want to communicate with their husbands and they want to, to, to talk with them and to be understood most of all. Wow. And I think if men, if men can separate um, solution finding from just listening, it will go a long way in enhancing their marriage. Solution if men can separate Solution finding. Solution from listening. finding from listening. They will do well in their marriages. Anil, for someone who needs counseling, how do they contact you? Uh, you can pass on my contact information to them, Makina. All right, all right. I, I'll, I'll definitely um, do that. Uh, do you have any bonus? Do you have an extra C or any bonus I, information for our listeners? I, 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 I do not. Those are my five tools for this evening. We are keeping it short and succinct. 
Mercy, mercy. Anil, you, you are a busy man. You have so much doing. Thank you so much for spending time with us here in the open portal. We are happy that you, you came and you gave us 5C conversion, commitment, compassion, compromise, and of course, communication. Thank you so much, my friend, my brother, relationship coach, counselor. And of course, the list goes on and on and on. Thank you so much for making it as guest to the open portal. Thank you for having me, sir. So there you have it, my friends. The cheat sheet for your for a successful uh, diet. Of course, diet. Uh, it means two, you know, I didn't say, in some instances, you, it could be a triad, because it's you, you, the man, the woman, and God. And of course, if you're just joining us, you would have missed it, but don't go too far. A little later from now, we'll have the rebroadcast of the cheat sheet of married. What we're essentially saying is not that how to cheat in your relationship, but how to have a successful marriage. And of course, my friend, he did a wonderful job. I want to say thanks to him, of course, to his wife, to allowing him to be here, of course, on the Sabbath. For Sabbath was, uh, it, it was instituted for families to, to bond and to spend time. Of course, yours truly, Pastor M-A-R-K-I-N-O. And of course, in studio with me this evening is my... Uh, what, 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 what should I say now? I, I don't want to say astute because I said that when I was starting. Um, I don't want to say audacious because he's not. But I'm looking for a word. Assidious. That's the word I'm looking for. Of course, his name michael s williams i don't I, I will not tell you what the s stands for but he knows um if you want to say salvation of course he has it because he believe in in in, in saving grace he believe in giving people uh the, the platform so that they can be saved and save others of course of course the beautiful the eloquent the ever present lady elise is also in studio and of course for those who have joined whether you are in the diaspora whether you are in grand Cay, wherever you are maybe bermuda wherever you are from my heart to yours i want to say i love you all and of course looking forward to see you next week when we do it all over again god bless you i'm out bye-bye sweet dreams I can hear his still small voices, heaven's peace and joy to share. God, I know that you are with me. I have always seen the signs, but there is nothing quite as special like when we meet. A holy time mm -hmm. Holy time A taste of heaven Oh, the fullness of His love Out of all He chose the seventh Fresh anointing from above I have tasted living water nothing like this none will find all oh, the beauty of God's presence when we meet for holy time Only righteousness, New Jerusalem descended with the saints of God to rest. I'll forever sing God's praises, for He'll be forever mine. Then We'll be together, God and I, Jesus.
Jesus and die my Lord and I in all time. yes thank you for the Sabbath day hallelujah hallelujah Jesus bless your name The Open Portal with Martina Farron every Friday at 5 to 6.30 p.m. and every Sabbath afternoon at 6 to 6.30 p.m. Fresh anointing from above as the Church of Heaven is one with the Church on Earth. It's holy time. The portal is open and God is with us. You and I on The Open Portal with your host Martina Farron, only Flashpoint Radio. Holy time, the day has ended. Now the Sabbath has begun.